So once again, guys, thanks for joining this session. And today I'm basically starting with your IPsec BP and your Palo Alto firewall. Now, before that, basically we have to understand some background of IPsec BPN or how it will started and all right. So, we'll go here basically, or if I design a diagram here, let's take an example. You have here head office. This is your head office environment. Let's suppose this head office you are having in Delhi office. Okay, so this is in Delhi. This is the location. Now, in Delhi office, basically you have around 20 servers and you are having around 1000 users. They are working from home. Sorry, they are working from that particular office. Now, your organization now they use, they decided to basically open one more office in Bangalore. So let's take an example. They have opened one branch office in Bangalore location. Now, in this location, let's take an example. You have only 500 users and you are having around 10 servers. These are the servers on which these particular users wants to do some their day-to-day -day works, right? Now, now again, your organization decides to open one more office. Let's take an example. They have opened new office in Hyderabad. This is branch two. Here also have you are having around 500 users capacity. And let's suppose you are having around 10 servers. Apart from these 10 servers, if I'll take an example. to allow the communication to these particular thousand users of these 20 servers. And also you want to allow the communication of these to these people to the internet, right? Because without internet, your user, they will not able to survive now. So what is the solution now for that? Basically, if I'm not wrong, you need a one firewall who can provide the inspection, right? You need one IPS. So you will get some layer seven inspection like you will get the protection from virus, spywares, vulnerabilities, right? Apart from this, you need few layer two switches and you need one at this layer three switch, right? At least you need one router. So you need these many devices in your head office. Apart from that, basically, you also need some maybe five to six good network engineers, right? Who can manage your head office infra. So now you have a same type of setup in your branches as well. So you need a same type of environment into your branches, right? Now calculate the cost in this kind of scenario, basically. You have to pay huge cost for these devices and you need to pay the huge cost for the management purpose of these devices. You need to pay huge amount for the licensing of these devices, right? Now, the, what is the other solution? What do you can do? Whatever servers we are having, because whenever we will design a solution, we always design a solution in such a way. So whatever servers we are having, at least they can support 3000 users basically. So if like if few of the servers went down due to any reason, we still have the high availability, right? So now in your head office, you are having a full capacity. You are having the full amount of servers who can basically capable enough to handle your, at least these two branch of a traffic. Now, guys, I'm talking about the old days, basically 10 years back, 20 years back. What used to happen? These head office and branches, they used to connect with the point to point connections. Or you have to, you have to manage this particular cabling from Delhi till Bangalore. You need to manage the cable from Delhi to Hyderabad, basically. 
then only you you are able to basically provide the connectivity and in that case you don't need to put these servers into your branches you whatever you have all the servers here in your head office now the problem with this setup let's take an example if this particular cable become faulty due to any reason between delhi to bangalore it may be any location right if these kind of issues came what used to happen your bangalore people they will not able to communicate with your head office for maybe 15 days or 10 days or 30 days like that these kind of problem they used to face okay so this was the solution in old days basically that was that solution is not scalable right after that there are few organization if i'll take the example of these organization like your british telecom your airtel your tata what they come up with one solution what they have done they have created their backbone network so let's take an example this is bt backbone network this is airtel backbone net network and let's suppose this is tata backbone network what they have done they have provided the connectivity between head office and branch office or like between delhi and bangalore apart from this they have also provided the connectivity let's take an example if you have one of the office in dubai somewhere now you they have a backbone connectivity they have a they they are the they are the people who is responsible for managing all the backbone network all the connectivity work which is basically happening between delhi to bangalore or delhi to dubai right so that solution if you know is called as like mpls which means these service providers they come up with the solution which is mpls solution now what we used to happen we used to get the point to point connection from head office to the bt delhi office we can say this is the point to point link and after that at bangalore office also we can get any connection or maybe the connection from bt this is also point to point and they used to basically provide the connectivity to our private networks so this technology when this technology came in the market it's boomed in the market during that time but as you have seen as internet is growing right nowadays if you remember we will get the internet connection in india it's very cheap right maybe we will get the internet connection in 1000 rupees 2000 rupees right very with the good internet speed so what happens basically when ipsec is developed after that what happens we have seen the rapid grow every organization what they have done they have basically start purchasing the internet connection from these particular internet service providers this is the internet link normal internet link with one public ip and after that, what they are doing they are basically building the ip sec tunnels between their branch office and between their head office now why people is moving towards the ipsec solution because they are having mpls solution so the problem with this mpls solution it's costly if you will purchase a mpls link from any of the service provider you have to pay around 2 lakh or per month but with this internet solution you basically due to the ipsec this connected connectivity part become very easy basically so that's how your ipsec evaluation happens now if i'll talk about the vpn types so we have a multiple types of vpn here so if you will see here i have written i have written here trusted vpn which is your mpls vpn and vrf secured vpn we have ipsec and ssl right these are the main two types of vpn we are having now this mpls vpn on this vrf solution it is it's a costly solution right and if we will go with the ipsec solution it's a cheap solution 
that was the one of the biggest reason every organization they are just using the ipsec solution now we have a multiple types of vpn if you will see here we can implement ipsec vpn in multiple ways so there are around 22 types of vpns basically so when i used to tease the vpn into cisco devices i used to basically need around 30 to 40 classes minimum to complete a course but here in palo alto basically there are only few use cases we don't have much use cases with regards to the vpn so now if i'll come to the actual theory of vpn so vpn basically stand for virtual private network virtual private networks means what it will do it will provide the secure communication between head office and branch office even though between the customer network so what it, they, it will provide the secure communication now so vpn allow the secure communication over the public environment public environment means through the internet now if i have mentioned here secure communication so the secure communication means what it will do it will basically the main focus of your ipsec vpn is to maintain the three properties on your data three properties is called as cia c stand for confidentiality i stand for integrity and a stand for authenticity the main purpose of your ipsec vpn is to maintain the cia properties in your users traffic or in your users data right which is flowing between your head office and branch office even though between your your network and your customer environment right now what is this confidentiality confidentiality meaning is let's suppose you are sending one message to one user basically so let's say you are sitting in your head office and your user he is sitting in branch office so you are sending one very very confidential file now if there is any any hacker in between and if he is he is basically capturing the packets if you will send this file in a normal way what he will do he can capture the entire file and he can basically see the content of that file right so this confidentiality means what we will do this generally it will maintain the confidentiality of your data whatever information you will send no one able to see whatever information you will basically send through the public internet no one able to see the information basically what as the information you are sending so this confidentiality we will achieve using the encryption algorithm using the encryption algorithm or by we, we can achieve this confident confidentiality of your data by using the encryption now so now we i have basically write down one term here encryption now let's basically understand what is this encryption let me just make some space here so we have seen this confidentiality confidentiality we always achieve by using the encryption encryption mean let's take an example this is my system pc1 this is my head office firewall i am sitting in head office this is my head office firewall this is internet cloud 
in the path. After I have my branch of his firewall here. And behind this branch of his firewall, I am having one router, maybe router R1. And behind this router, I am having my LAN segment. This is the normal setup I am having. Now, let's suppose this particular router, I am managing using the Telnet protocol. I am using a Telnet application for the remote management of this particular router. So let's suppose on this PC, what I have done, I have basically just write down Telnet and I have put the IP address of R1. And just remember guys, there is a BPN tunnel is already established between your head office and your branch office. This BPN tunnel is there. This is your IPsec BPN tunnel. Now, when this data reach to your firewall, this telnet request, after that, what happens? Because you are running the IPsec BPN between your branch office, so now your data, it will enter into your IPsec tunnel. So when this will this data enter into your IPsec tunnel, what happens? Your data will encrypt it. So let's suppose you have type here telnet R1. Maybe after the encryption, this data looks like this star A, B, C, one, two, five, like that. Some random content. Maybe if somebody in the path, he will basically, if there is a one hacker, let's suppose sitting over there, this is the hacker system. If he capture the data, he is not able to capture this one, tell that R1, he is just capturing this data. So, because this is the clear text, if I'll say, this data is a clear text, right? Now, we have applied the encryption. So this, this data, whatever data we will get after applying the encryption, this data is known as cipher text. So in encryption, what is encryption? In encryption, what we will do, we will basically convert the clear text data or human readable data into the cipher text basically or into the cipher text so if somebody capture your data he will not able to see what's what's the data you are sending right because this is the data which is basically flowing and it will reach till your branch office now when this branch of his firewall he will receive this particular cipher text what it will do To read the cipher text, he needs to apply the decryption algorithm. He needs to decrypt the data. So he will apply the decryption on this data. And after decryption word, he will get this particular telnet R1, maybe this command he will get. And after that, this particular clear text information he will forward towards this route. So head of his file, what he's doing, he's encrypting the data. And after that, he is putting the data inside the IP sector, right? Don't worry how the how the encapsulation happens with ESP. I will discuss later, but I'm just building the background of it. Okay. So now for encryption and decryption. If you want to achieve the encryption and decryption, you need two things. You need some kind of encryption algorithm, right? You need some kind of encryption algorithm. And apart from that, you also need some kind of key. Or we can say some kind of password or some kind of key you need for encrypting the data. And whenever you, when you will try to decrypt that data, you need to apply the same algorithm and same key. Then only you will able to decrypt the data, right? So now let's basically understand what is encryption algorithm and what is key. So key part I will discuss later. Now, for encryption purpose, we are having few algorithm. We have a DES algorithm, a DES, we have three DES. After that, we are having some advanced version, AES-128. 
Then we have AES 192. We have AES 256. And we do have RC4. So these are the few encryption algorithm which we are having for encrypting the data. Now, just try to understand here one point. What I have mentioned, I have mentioned, we use this IPsec VPN to maintain the CIA, right? Confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity, right? Now, confidentiality we are achieving, right? By using the encryption algorithm. Now let's take an example. Still, we are sending this data on the public internet, right? In an encrypted form. And if this hacker, he can able to capture that data, Let's suppose he can able to capture that data and let's suppose what now he can do. Now this hacker, he can only able to do one thing. Either he can add some extra bit on your data. Either he can remove something from your data, which means now he can only able to temper your data, right? Tempering is still can be done by the hacker. Now, if hacker is able to temper the data, which means we are losing here integrity. We are losing here integrity, right? So guys, whenever we will send this encrypted data and, to, and if you want to maintain the integrity on your data, we have to use the some hashing algorithm. We have to use the concept of hashing here. So in hashing, what we used to do, whenever we will forward any data on your IP sector, so first we will apply the encryption. And after that, on that encrypted data, we will apply the hash. We will apply the hashing algorithm. And now hash is a some fixed value. Let's take an example. If I'm using here SHA-256 as a hashing algorithm. So this is the popular hashing algorithm SHA-256, right? So what it will do, it will create a 256 bit of hash value. Now, what I will do now, when I will forward this data through this IP sectional, I will forward this encrypted data and along with, I will also forward the hash, this value as well. Now, I am sending this cipher text plus hash over the IP sectional when other end, this firewall, he will receive this data. What he will do, he will also apply the hash on that data. On the cipher text, my branch of his firewall, he will apply the hash. Whatever value he will get, he will match this value and this value. Now just remember guys, one thing, if this hacker, he will basically try to temper anything from your encrypted content. If he will add anything or if he will remove anything from this data, that hash value will change. What? This hash value will change. So this is how we will basically maintain the integrity on your data by using the hashing. For hashing, we are having some algorithm. First algorithm is MD5. Then we have SHA-1. Then we have SHA-256. Then we have SHA-2512. So these are the few popular algorithm. Nowadays, people are using SHA and SHA-256. These are the popular hashing algorithm which is used by the people nowadays. Now, so we will get the integrity by using the hashing algorithm. Now the last property of your IPsec VPN is authenticity. Authenticity ensures when we will forward, when we are sending this data from this machine till this machine, right? So I have mentioned here, there is a one IPsec tunnel is created. Now, how? We can make sure this particular IPsec tunnel we have created with the right peer. 
or whatever data we are sending, how we can make sure this is the right person. We are sending the data to right person, right? How we can see this information or how we can validate this part. So guys, this part we will achieve by using the authenticity or by using the authentication. So for the authentication purpose, what we are having two ways. Either we can use the please add key, which is PSK. Please add key is a, some kind of password like Cisco. If I'll give the example, Cisco at 321. We'll set the same password here and we can set the same password here. Either we can achieve by using the PKI environment. PKI stands for public key infrastructure, which is also known as your certificate based authentication. So guys, this is how we will maintain the CIA in your IPsec communication. Okay, now, if I'll come back to my major type. So in IPsec, basically IPsec sub have generally two types of VPN. IPsec site-to-site -site VPN, and IPsec remote access VPN. Nowadays, guys, just remember one thing, in your remote access VPN, we are also using IPsec here as well. Just remember, we can use IPsec in this particular environment as well. Now, if I write down a few example of rem remote access VPN, so in your Palo Alto Fiverr, if you have seen Global Protect, it's a example of your remote access VPN. In Global Protect, we can run this VPN in two types. Either we can use SSL or TLS. Either we can use IPsec. Initial communication will happen over SSL or TLS. And after that, actual data, they will encrypt by using the IPsec. Cisco AnyConnect we have. This is also most popular solution of remote access VPN. We can use here for any kind of either we can use TLS, we can use DTLS, and you can also use IPsec if you want. So it will provide all these three ways. I mentioned like confidentiality, we will achieve by using encryption, integrity, we, we can achieve by using hashing, and authenticity, we can achieve by using preset key or either PKI. Now, What encryption will do? It will convert the plain text or clear text into cipher text by using the key. Decryption, in decryption, what we will do? We will convert the cipher text into plain text by using the key. Now guys, just try to understand one more thing. We have two types of encryption method. Symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption. So the major difference between symmetric and asymmetric encryption, just remember, in symmetric encryption, both end, firewall one and firewall two, they will use same key for the encryption purpose and same key for the decryption purpose. But in asymmetric encryption, what happens? We are having Two keys. One key is known as public key, and another key we will use known as private key. So now in asymmetric encryption, whatever data you will encrypt by using public key, you are only allowed to decrypt by using private key. Whatever data you will encrypt by using your private key, you are only able to decrypt it by using the public key. So here we have maintained two keys basically. So that's the main difference between symmetric and asymmetric algorithm. Now, in symmetric encryption, we are having algorithm like this. It's a 56 bit of algorithm. Then we have three days. It's a 168 bit of algorithm. Then we have AES 128, 192, 256. And we have RC4, which is a 128 bit. 
what do you mean by these bit basically i will tell you later okay same key we use for encryption and decryption papa now guys just remember we have two types of ciphers generally or these algorithm they will work in two ways either they can work with the block cipher mode either they can work with the steam cipher mode or these encryption algorithm we have two types of encryption algorithm block cipher and stream cipher now in block cipher what happens so your dash and three dash these are the popular block cipher algorithm what they will do if i take example of dash so in dash basically it is a 56 bit of algorithm right so what it will do whenever it will try to encrypt the data so what it will basically pick the data which is 56 bit and after that it will basically apply the encryption so means it will encrypt the data let's suppose 64 bit block basically so it's a block cipher means it will pick the this much block and after that it will basically encrypt that block so block by block encryption will happen in case of aes basically what whatever we have mentioned so let's say if we are using aes 128 which means what it will do it will pick the 128 bit information and after that it will encrypt this block of data and after it will start encryption for another 128 bit then another 128 like that it will do the encryption basically now in a steam cipher word it's a bit by bit encryption whatever bits you will receive it will do the bit by bit encryption that's the steam cipher so your rc4 is a steam cipher and your dash three dash and yes these are the block ciphers now in asymmetric encryption we are having rsa and defi hellman dh in rsa so like if you remember if you have seen when we used to take the shs of any machine do you used to get the warning always right accept the key or save the key right that time what they will present the public key basically and when you will save this public key and after that only you can able to connect with the shs just remember in this both side have two keys public key and private key they will share the public key with the other side whatever data you will encrypt with private key you are only able to decrypt it by using the public key and vice versa by using encryption we cannot able to achieve the confidential we will not able to achieve the integrity encryption algorithm only provides the confidentiality that's it now in integrity basically we have hashing algorithm md5 and sha2 sha1 then sha256 these are the some hashing algorithm it's a one way process reverse engineering is not possible in case of integrity device create the hash and append it on the header and send it towards the remote peer so this part we have seen and after that i have discussed the device authentic authentication so we will use preset key for that either we will use the certificates for that now now guys basically i will discuss the most important part of your ipsec vpn and if you go for any interview what they will ask they will ask can you explain the phase one and phase two exchange of your ipsec vpn how phase one and phase two exchange works in case of ipsec side to side vpn okay so if i say in ipsec basically we have phase one and phase two now in phase one we have generally two modes first mode is known as main mode and second mode is aggressive mode main mode we will exchange six messages in aggressive mode we will exchange three messages in phase two phase two exchange is known as quick mode in quick mode we will exchange around three messages so guys remember in most of the cases 
in phase one we will use main mode in phase two we just have a quick mode so you will see there is a nine message we will exchange between your between your firewall one and firewall two during the ipsec negotiation process now let's discuss these particular modes okay so i'll go here let me make some space here and let me just draw the one diagram this is firewall one this is the lan infra of firewall one so lan infra let's suppose 10 dot g dot g dot zero slash 20 then this is the internet service provider so isp end and this is your firewall two and this is the lan environment at your firewall two end this is 20.0.0.0 slash 20. This kind of setup we are having. Let's take an example. On this interface, generally, you have a public IP address. Let's take an example. You are having here 150.1.7.250. It's a public IP address at your firewall one. And we have a public IP address at your firewall two, which is 150.1.7.250. Sorry, it's 160. So these are the public IP address you are having in your outside interface of your firewalls. Now, let's take an example here. Your IPsec negotiation is started by this firewall too. So what happens when this IPsec negotiation is started? So from this firewall too, I have received one message. That message is known as main mode message number one. Now in this message, what are the parameters this firewall to basically put? So in this message firewall two, it will put one thing which is CI. And when this firewall to it, because it is he is sending the first message. So always remember this guy become the initiator. Now this firewall one, he needs to respond, right? So he will become the responder. Firewall two become the initiator and firewall one become the responder. Now firewall two, he will put here one thing, which is initiator cookie. This is the first thing. After that, he will, this firewall to, he will also put here Hegel information. Now let's discuss what is this Hegel. So in Hegel, H stand for hashing algorithm. Let's suppose from firewall two, we have get SHA-1 and we will get these two algorithms, which is SHA-256 as a hashing algorithm. A means authentication. In authentication, let's suppose between firewall one and firewall two, we are using preset key, right? So they will negotiate, I'm using preset key. He will tell to firewall one, I'm using preset key method, that's it. Then G stand for group, or I can say Daffy Hellman group. So let's suppose firewall two, he send group two and group five. And after that, he will send lifetime. L means lifetime. By default in parallel to firewall, they will, they will send around eight hours. So when you take the voice capture, you will see here in seconds. 28800. This is the value in seconds. And you will see the encryption algorithm. E means encryption algorithm. Now, encryption algorithm, let's suppose they are using three days. 
and AES 256. Let's suppose you send these two algorithms, AES 3 dash and AES 256, right? So this information you will see as a Hegel. This Hegel is also known as SAI, Security Association from the Initiator end. Now, apart from this, Firewall 2, he will also send here his Bender ID. He will send the Bender ID. Let's say this Firewall is a Palo Alto Firewall, Pan OS, and Firewall 1, he is also Pan OS. So what in Bender ID you will see, they will mention Pan OS. And they will also exchange here netty support. Netty support is there. If this firewall to is supporting the netty, he will send. I'm supporting the netty. So he will send this particular message. But apart from this, let me open one of the capture. Basically, we are going to take the captures as well, guys. But let me just open these captures. I have few captures for IPsec VPN. So let me open these captures. So if you will see here, let me just make some space. If you will see here, this is the first message of main mode, then second message, then third, then fourth, then fifth, then sixth. And after the quick mode is will start, right? So these are the total nine messages we are having here. Now, if I'll open the first message here, and guys, just remember one thing basically: this communication, whatever communication we are doing between firewall one and firewall two, they will basically this communication happening between these private IPs, sorry, these public IPs, and they will use port number, which is UDP 500, just remember. And the protocol, they will use ISACM. ISACM is a protocol, ISACM is stand for Internet Key Associ Association Key Management Protocol. Internet Security Association Key Management Protocol, ISACAMP. And ISACAMP uses UDP 500 as a transport layer protocol, basically. Okay, just remember this part. Now, if you will see, they are exchanging this initiator cookie. Responder cookie is zero because right now responder cookie is zero because this responder cookie is always generated by this particular firewall one because this is the responder for this communication. They will actually in the version, which version they are using. So if you want, you can put that detail as well. IQ version one, generally that communication is happening on IQ version one. So they are just mentioned, they are using IQ version one. Exchange pro pro protection they, or identity protection, they are using main mode. These are some flags here. And after that, you will see payload security association. If you will open this payload security association, you will get your policy. These are the Hegel information basically. You will see they are exchanging lifetime, which is in seconds, right? Two eight eight double zero. This is the lifetime value. These are the encryption algorithm. They are using three dash hashing authentication method preset key hashing algorithm SHA one dev group is group two, which is Defi Hellman group, right? So they are exchanging this value. You will see all combination of your haggles here, multiple phase one policy you will see so this haggle is also known as like your phase one policies and you will see the entire combination of your phase one policies here 
apart from this they are exchanging the net travels sir right and they are basically also exchanging the vendor id right vendor id detail this is the vendor id details okay so this is the value which they will exchange into first message initiator cookie responder cookie zero here then haggle or sai all combination of your encryption algorithm of phase one policies then vendor id net t support now guys just remember this initiator cookie how they will calculate this particular cookie value so for calculating this initiator cookie what they will run the md5 hash on source ip address which is this one destination ip address which is this one source ip destination ip time they will use apart from that there is a one more value actually they will use for generating this cookie source ip destination ip random number time and date so these are the values they will use time date and random number like that this guy he will calculate the cookie information they use this cookies they will exchange these cookies just to protect from the dos kind of attack if someone is trying to replay the packet so to protect from these kind of attacks they will use the cookies here that's how they will calculate the cookie because in in your interview may with maybe someone asked how they will calculate the cookie so you can just say they will do the md5 hash on source ip destination ip random number time and date this is just a random number which is generated by this firewall too apart from this basically what they will do if you will see here cookie protect against the dot dos attack or replay dos attack basically it's a eight byte pseudo random number it's just a eight byte of number basically if i'll mention the size here size of this value is 8 bytes okay now my firewall to he receive all these parameters so now this firewall to what he will do now he will respond now when he will respond so he will send here message number 2 now in this message number 2 what he will do he will put here ci value and he will put the cr value cr value which is the cookie from the responder side it's the same md5 of source ip destination ip time date and random number right like that it will calculate the cookies now after that you will see the sar security association from the responder which means here if you will see any voice shark captures in message number 1 if i'll put like that i'll open this security association one only you will see they have exchanged multiple parameters right so let me just go like that so you will understand the things properly okay so if i'll go into the security payload tab now you will see here they have sent around eight combination right what these combination they are the combination of like in maybe first combination they are using dash as a encryption algorithm sha1 as a hashing algorithm group 2 as a def hellman group preset key as an encryption algorithm like time is 28800 maybe in another one they are using 3 dash as a encryption algorithm sha as a hashing algorithm group 
PSK and two eight double zero. Maybe another one they are using dash as an encryption algorithm, but this time they are using here hashing algorithm two fifty six group two preset key and two eight double zero. So they all these combination they will basically exchange here. Now just remember one thing: they are exchanging all these combination, right? My firewall two he has sent all the combination towards firewall one. So what my firewall one will do when he receive this combination? What he will basically start looking for all the possible combination, and what and after that what it will basically compare, compare the configuration. What is the configuration he is having at their his end? And after comparing whatever that whatever data he will get. Whatever the compared data he will get, so which means whatever the supported configuration we are having at firewall one, what he will accept these parameters only. Because by end of the day, they both the firewall they needs to agree on one encryption algorithm. Maybe they are using three days. They have to agree on one hashing algorithm. Maybe start to fifty six. They have to agree on one DAFI element group, which is group two. They have to agree on preset key and they have to agree on lifetime. So maybe let's suppose this is the combination which is selected by firewall two, firewall one, the responder firewall, right? So this combination they will basically send. Now, if you want to see this data, so if you go here into the message number two, in message number two you will see. If I'll put like that. So you are having the NetT, DPD, and vendor ID. And if you will open the security association, and if I open this payload information, they have agreed on this lifetime two eight eight double zero three days. They are using as an encryption preset key SHA one and. Group two as a hashing algorithm, right? He will just re respond with the acceptive parameters or acceptive proposal, basically, or agreed proposal, right? So you will get the SAR. This thing I can also mention like that, like accepted phase one policies and. After that, you will get the same thing. Vendor ID, NetT support, right? So this is the content of your message number one. Now, guys, just remember one thing. Let's suppose we have received the eight combination of phase one policies from firewall two, right? Towards firewall one. Now at this firewall one, let's suppose it is not having the matching. Whatever eight combination he has sent, it is not having matching combination at his end. In that case, what happen? What will happen? Your exchange will stuck at this particular point of time. You will see at this device whenever you will check the SA's details, you will see it is waiting on MM message wait. MM message wait one you will get here because you he will not receive the response yet. So main and also if you will see the debugs in your Palo Alto Fiber you will see phase one policies is not accepted or phase one proposal is not accepted. You will get this this message in your debugs. So like that by looking into that message. We will able to oh we will able to find out oh this is the issue basically we have to verify our phase one parameters are similar or at least one combination is similar at both end or not so that's how basically we will see the details in your debug log if you your exchange or B pin is stuck in message number one now. You will get the details here. Now, and after that, basically, what they will do, 
he received the message number two from the firewall one now firewall two what he will do he will send the next message in this next message what he will do this message let's suppose is known as message number three in this message number three what you will see here ci value you will see cr value you will see and you will see one value is known as let's suppose x and i can see this is your dh key you will see the nunch value which is ni from the firewall to and from firewall one word you will get in message number four ci value cr value and you will get here y this is a dh public key and you will get the nr value which is the nunch value from the responder this nunch value it just a combination of public prime numbers it just a random number it's a public prime numbers basically okay like that they will actually match number three and four but we have to discuss what is this dh key right how they will calculate right this is a part of our discussion now so now let's discuss that part what they will use to generally they will action cicr and they will action the calculated public key from firewall one and i is a nunch value which is a public prime number or you can say pseudo random number and they will exchange the net d payload as well i have missed that part what you will see you will see one more parameter here which is the net d payload so here you will see two payloads source net d payload and destination net d payload i will tell you what's that don't worry here also you will get the net d payload from the source side and destination dst so these payload you will get here these are the calculated public keys or these are the calculated defi hellman public keys x and y now how they will do the calculation so they will use this particular formula so if i write down this formula here g raised to the power what's that let me get it from here again g raised to the power private key mod p private key then mod p which is equals to x this is the x value right now what is the y here so if i write down the y y equals to g raised to the power private key mod p this is y now what is this g and p so guys just remember one thing we have this defi element group right this ds group so we have like group 2 we have 5 we have 14 19 20 like that we have multiple defi hellman groups and the value of these g and p is fixed for these particular groups for specific groups these values are fixed just remember this part and apart from this basically when basically this bpn exchange will start when this firewall to his bill he is trying to send this message number 3 before that what this firewall will used to do he used to calculate two things he used to generate the private key and he used to generate the public key what this firewall to used to do he used to generate these keys public key and private key same when my firewall one he will send the message number 4 he will also have these public key and private key public key and 
private key they will use they will generate this public key and private key now let's take an example if i'll go here so let's suppose they are using group 2 so for group two, basically G equals to five and P equals to 17. These are the two values for G values and P values for group two. Let's take an example. So G equals to five and P equals to 17. These are the value of G and P. Now, if you will see firewall one, he's calculating the public key and private key individually, right? So let's take an example. The public key value is here, six and private key value is eight. Here also public private key value is maybe nine and public key value may be 11, right? Anything or maybe five. These are the individual calculation they are doing and these, these calculations should be anything. Just remember in the production environment, these values are something very, very big numbers. Okay, but for but here I'm just telling you these things basically so we can able to do that calculation as well. And we can basically try to understand how they will calculate the DH key and all right now what we will do. Now let's calculate the value of X first, then we will calculate the value of Y first. So what I will do, I will open my calculator here. Now we will understand the calculations and on your Palo Alto Firewall Debugs, I will show you how they are basically driving these keys. Okay, don't worry on that. Just be on this particular session now. So if I want to generate the value of X, what I will do, G equals to five, key power nine, right? So I will put the power nine here. equals to this, then we have mod P, right? P equal to 17. So I will go with mod here, mod 17 equals to 12, right? So this is the value which we have received for X, X equals to 12 here, right? Now let's calculate the value of Y here. Now, to calculate the y value, what I will do, g equals to 5. We have to go with the power of 6 here. Because, no, not the power of 6. We have to go with the power of 8 here. Because we have to use the private key. Equals to this. Then mod 17. So we have get the value here 16, right? So y equals to 16. Now, this value equals to 16. Now both the parties, they have received the value of x and y. When they will receive this value of x and y, what they will do guys? Now they will start the calculation of the actual DHK. This is not actual DHK. If you want, you can remove that part from here. This is not actual DHK. If you want, you can put the value here, which is you can write down this thing like calculated public key or whatever you want to write here, right? Or calculated public key. calculate public key or you can put here calculated public key. Okay. Now after that, what they will do. Now what they have will start the creation of your session keys and what they will do the first key would they will try to generate which is DH key. Now this DH key is similar on your firewall one on your firewall two. And what is the method they will use? They will use the calculated public key raised to the power private key mod p this is the method they are using so if i write down this thing dhk equals to calculated public key 
16 right calculate public key raised to the power private key what is this private key 8 then mod p right mod p which is 17 let's calculate this value Sixteen raised to the power eight equals to this mod equals to seventeen, which is one, right? So this value looks like here one. Now here also we have to calculate the DHK. So DHK equals to I think I have used their wrong method basically. I have to use this value basically X here, not 16. I have to use here 12. Okay. 12 this to the power 8 mod 17. And here I have to use 16 this to the power 9 mod 17. Let me remove this thing 12. This to the power 8 equals to this mod 17. So we have get here 16, right? Let me just calculate this value as well. So let me remove this part. 16 raised to the power 9 equals to this, then mod 17. You will get the 16. Now we have get the same DHK at both the end, guys. This is how they will basically calculate the same DHK at both the end. And after getting this DH key, what they will generate now, they will basically generate one more key, which is SKID. What? Now they will generate this SKID. After generating this SKID, they will generate one more key, which is known as, and for generating this SKID, they will use HMAC preset key. They will use NI value, NR value, and what they will, they will concatenate both the values and they will generate the SKID. After generating this SKID, they will generate SKID D. For they will use H, HMAC, SKID, then DH key, CI, CRN, 0, then SKID A, then SKID E. They will generate these particular four extra keys here. SKID. First, they will generate the D, which is derivative key. Then they will generate SKID. A. And the last one is SKID E. They will use for encryption purpose. This and also do the same thing. SKID. Then SKID D. SKID E. Sorry, A, then E. Now, this SKID A, I have mentioned the hashing, right? So they will use this SKID A for the hashing purpose, and they will use SKID E for the encryption purpose. And guys, just remember one thing in your IP site to site VPN, message number one, two, three, and four, they will exchange in clear text. These four messages they will exchange in clear text. And after that, after generating these keys basically, and just remember whatever keys I have generated here, this one and this one, they are similar on both the end. On both the firewall one and firewall two, they are having the similar keys. After that, just remember. 
so and how they will do the calculation so these are the some tricky formulas they will use skidd then they will do the hmac on that skid whatever they will generated here they will this they will use as a key and they will use this as a parameters dh key cicr value and guys just remember one thing i have mentioned this pre shared key so guys just remember any your ipsec vpn they never share the pre shared key with each other they just use their pre shared key in the calculation of their session keys if there is a mismatch with regards to pre shared key these keys will change basically these values of these keys will change okay so if somebody ask in the interview you can basically just tell them they never share the pre shared key and if there is a mismatch because this pre shared key is similar at both the end if there is a mismatch with regards to this pre shared key you will get the sanity check failed message or you will get the pre shared key mismatch message when you will check the system logs okay don't worry i will show you how they will do the calculation on your palo alto firewall and they are using your cicr value your nunch value as a parameters or as a data basically if you will see skid they are using as key and remaining values they are using as a data and now you see here they are every time they are using here they are adding zero then one then two right and they are using whatever key they will generated here they are using this key as a data here again right so that's how your vpn exchange become very very secure whatever calculation you are doing next you are using the some values from the previous calculation so that's how your calculation become very very secure in case of vpn if you want to really see that information you can check out these links basically if i'll go into these links generally you will get the whole idea how they will calculate the keys and everything see how they are mixing it how they are creating these keys and everything right so you will see these kind of values you will see here for p and all right but we have just take the hypothetical numbers and like that they have basically generated the details okay okay cool now in your vaisha capture if you will see message number 3 if you will open you will get the these details you will get the net dp load for source and destination right you will see here hash of address and port numbers source port head hash of destination and port destination source destination ip and port numbers key exchange this is the key they are exchanging so i have mentioned this value of x and y this value right x and y this value looks like that actually in the actual environments but for the betterment i have just used that will see that this value and these are the hash value and after that you will see message number 5 and 6 you will not able to see anything because the encryption will start from that message onwards what happens your encryption will start from that message onwards so your message number 5 and your message number 6 which is exchange between both the devices they will exchange in encrypted form in this message basically what they will do your encryption is has been started right so in these message you will exchange cicr value idi value and hash i value ci value cr value idi will idi is identity payload and your hash i value which is a hashed payload cicr idr and hashr so these are the values you will exchange in message number 5 and 6 now what this idi and what is this idr these are the identity payload basically these are the hash value of these ip address these public ip address basically how they will do the calculation for that 
So this hash they will generate by using these X, Y, C, I, C, R, S, A, R, and I, D, R. They will use all these values to calculate the hash, this hash I. Hash I, it will include your X, Y, S, A, R, and S, A, I, all these values they will include into this hash I value. And I, D, R, these are the identity payloads. So what they will do? They will send this hash value of this IP address. An idea, an idea you will get the hash value of this IP, an idea you will get the hash of this value, like that they will exchange this message. These two messages, they will basically exchange for the authentication purpose. Maybe in interview, what they will ask, they will ask you how basically between how in IPsec VPN, how firewall one and firewall two authenticate each other. You have to explain like that. They will basically use this message number five and six, where they will actually in the identity payload. This is known as identity payload. This identity payload, they will encrypt by using the SKID E and they will hash by using the SKID A. So your encryption will start from here. That's how they will exchange these particular details. And this is your main mode, guys. When your main mode will complete, you will see phase one is up now. And one ISA camp essay is created. It's a bi-directional essay, just remember. What one bi-directional ISA camp essay, or you can say Ike version one essay is created, which is a bi-directional essay. So that's how they will basically do exchange these particular messages. This is your main mode, guys. Now what I will do for quick mode, let me just first set up my lab. And because the thing is now encryption will start it, right? If you will see here, these message payload is encrypted, right? Now let me just set up my lab environment and we will see how we can decrypt these messages. And after that, you will see these ESP. These are the actual user traffic. This is also encrypted. Now we will see how we can decrypt that part as well. Okay. So for that, I need to make my lab up and running. So let me just start conferring my lab environment. I'll open this ISP router. I'll open this device and this device as well. Let's start with the ISP router. Guys, my screen is visible properly, right? Content are in a proper format as well, right? Okay. Now, let me just go for the configuration on this, this particular router. Host name, ISP01. Okay, interface F0 by zero, no shutdown, and IP address is 151.7.1255.255.255.0. Another interface having IP address F0 by one, 160 network there. It's not 160, I think it's 170, yep, 170. No shutdown and right, ma'am. I'll go into the inside router, which is in head office. This is my branch of inside router. I will take guys your questions after the session. Okay. Host name. Inside R1, just give me one second, guys. Okay. Host name inside R1. Now I will basically configure here interface. F0 by 0. No shutdown. And IP address is 10.1. .1 one dot hundred two five five 
255.255.0 interface loop back 11 ip address is 11.1.1.100.255.255.255.0 exit ip route i will point one route towards my yeah, i'll just put one default route towards my firewall and on firewall i will use 10.1.1.250 ip address let me enable the telnet as well here line pty 0 to 4 login local exit let me enable the http service as well ip http server username test or cisco privilege 15 and password is also cisco do right ma'am let me save the config here let's go into your branch office and let's do the config interface conf t host name branch of a zero one interface f zero by zero ip address 20.1.1.100.255.255.255.0 no shutdown interface loopback 21 ip address is 21 1.1.100.255.255.255.0 exit ip route 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0 .0 0.0.0.0 21.1.250 let me enable the telnet here as well line pty 0 to 4 login local exit username cisco publish 15 and password is cisco do right ma'am done with that config now let me just check the configuration let me start with the config on my firewalls 130 i am having on my first firewall and 131 i am having ip address on second firewall https 192 168 137 dot 130 and 131 here admin admin so I'm using guys my head office. I'm having Palo Alto 10 in branch office. I'm using Palo Alto 9. So you will get the both the firewalls here. Admin. Admin at one, two, three. Admin at one, two, three. Login local. Okay, so I'm logging on both the machines now. I'll go to the X of this device. So first I will just change the IP address. Let me change the host name as well. Palo Alto. Firewall 2. Domain and other things I will leave default. I just want to modify the this part ACR Kolkata. Interface, I will basically go here and I'll configure the IP address static IV 192, 168, 137.11. 
255.255.255.0.2. Okay, comment. Let's do the same thing on this firewall 10. Sorry, in head of his firewall, which is firewall one. Palo Alto. Firewall zero one. Change the time zone AC a Kolkata. Interface. Aesthetic. I will configure it 10 IP address 255.255.255.0. And two is the default gateway for my management network. Let's do the commit now. I will access with new IP address now. Admin. Admin. Now I will basically start the configuration of interfaces and other part basically. So what I will do, I will configure here on this interface, I will configure IP address which is 150. 1.7.250 and I will basically add one default gate default out to bus IP address of that which is 151.1.7.1 right same thing I will do here I will configure IP address which is 170 1.7.250 and I will find one default gate bit over this router on this interface I will use here 10.1.1.250 here I will configure 20.1.1.250 so for the communication purpose, I am I will build the tunnel like that. This is how my tunnel will be built. Okay. Now let me access this machine with 10 IP address. I will first start configuring configuration from firewall one, then firewall two, like that I will go. Admin, admin at one, two, three. Let me open the console as well for these devices. See, when we will take the SSH on new device, this is the thing which we used to receive, right? We used to receive the public key. And guys, remember one thing when you will run this command, so sub so, so system software, then status. So, guys, always remember if your VPN is having any issues, basically just check the process which is Ike Manager and Key Manager these processes are running or not 
because this ike manager and key manager these are the main demons who will basically take care of your bpn related task apart from these demons and your bpn related task basically your mp relay will also participate apart from this mp relay let me just see what is the other demon which will there's your tunnel d this demon will also participate so it will take care of your all the tunnel related task basically so these are the main four demons which you have to check if your bpn is not working in your palo alto file ike manager key manager tunnel d and mp relay apart from these demons let me just see and also your crypto d guys just remember this so there are around five demons crypto so it will take care of your key generation and all then we are having key mgr key manager so this is the demon who will take care of your key management and all then your tunnel d tunnel d it's a demon which is running in your data plane basically so which he will take care of your tunnel related task then apart from that we are having mp relay so if you have enabled the dpd and all right so this is the demon who will take care of that part your routing related functionality for bpn it will mp relay will take it is also running on this is also a data plane demon mp relay is also deep data plane demon and after that we are having most important demon which is ike mgr this is the main demon of your ipsec bpn all your handshake thing and everything all your main mode exchange all these thing will take care of this particular ike mgr demon guys just remember okay so these are the five demons and this crypto d it is running in your management plane key manager is also a part of management plane or ike mgr is also part of your management plane just remember okay so these are the five demons which will involved in your ipsec functionalities in your palo alto fiber now let's start the configuration part of it so i will start with the interface configuration first i'll go into ethernet one by one interface i and i will configure the ip address on this one so i will change the type type is layer 3 virtual router i will use the default virtual router and security zone i will put an outside zone so i will put here outside ipv4 address i will configure here 151.7.250/24 go here make the tunnel interface up and configure the interface management profile and just allow only ping service so we can at, at least able to ping our outside interface which is ethernet 1 by 1 click on okay so ethernet 1 by 1 has been configured now we have to configure ethernet 1 by 3 ethernet 1 by 3 is here layer 3 default virtual router you can use if you want you can create your as well but i will go with the default one and i will use here inside interface this is my inside interface ip4 address is 10.1.1.250/24 make the interface up and call your interface management profile after doing this thing go to into your virtual router and add the routing we have to add one default route right so go into static route and add one default route here default route which is dr 0.0.0.0/0 interface is this next up is 151.7.1 click on okay click on okay let's do the commit now go into this machine and do the same configuration here as well configure your interface so ethernet 1 by 1 as your outer interface configure that one on firewall 2 layer 
default security zone is outside click on okay ip address is 171.7.250 slash 24 up add one interface management profile with ping service click on ok click on ok now configure ethernet one by three interface here layer three default add one in inside zone here which is inside click on ok go here and configure the ip which is 20.1.1.250 slash 24 make the interface up and configure the interface management profile go to into one default route and add one default out here it's not this one we have to edit the existing virtual router and we will add one static default route dr 0.0.0.0 slash 0 171.7.1 click on ok i have to add again i have clicked wrongly in the cancel button dr 0.0.0.0 slash 0 171.7.1 let's do the commit now commit is completed here so these are the both firewalls what you have to do from this firewall which is firewall one try to ping ping source 151.7.250 to host just ping the next hope ip address is 151.7.1 ping is working which means we have a connectivity till next hope then ping next ip address which is 171.7.1 we are having we can able to ping that ip address as well right also try to ping your inside ip address 10.1.1.250 to host 10.1.1.100 ping is working for 100 as well right but guys if i try to ping this one 11.1.1.100 ping is not happening because i forget to add the route for 11 right so that's how we'll validate the first connectivity part guys just remember commit has been done here so i'll go into this again default route and i will into a static route i will add one static route for 11 series so i will give here net 11.1.1.0-24 which means i'm use i'm adding the route for this network right slash 24 interface this time it's one by three and next up is 10.1.1.100 so make sure first you have the end to end connectivity do the commit now once you will see when this commit will complete this ping will start working automatically same thing i have to do here as well right i have to add one default route for 21 segment here net so this is with 21 segment. Interface is Ethernet 1 by 3, 20.1.1.100. We are good now. Let's do the commit here, right? Now, go to into firewall 2 and verify the connectivity ping. Source 171.7.1. 250 to host just directly ping to firewall one ip address out the interface ip address ping is working which means 
we have a proper connectivity from this firewall till this firewall till, till out to the interface, right? If you have a connectivity, which means we are good to go with the VPN config now. Let me also verify the inside connectivity. 20.1.1.250 to host. 20.1.1.100. I have the inside connectivity as well, right? And commit will complete here. So you will see this ping will also start work. Okay, now. Just wait for one minute. Yeah, see it has start working, which means we have the end to end connectivity guys now. From this machine, this firewall, we can able to ping this, we can able to ping here as well, right? From this firewall also, we can able to ping here. From this fire, we can able to ping this. And from this, we can able to ping this networks, right? Which means connectivity wise, we are good or configuration wise, we are good. Now, what we will do? Now we will start the VPN configuration. So to start with the VPN configuration, you have to first go to into your iCrypto here. In iCrypto, what happens? I will add my phase one policies here. I will give the name here phase one policies. In phase one, what I will go and I will use here group two and group five. These are the two groups I will define. Authentication method I will define here SHA 256 and SHA 1. These are, and you can define SHA 360. 384 and 5112 as well, but I will go with these two only. These are my authentication method or these are my hashing algorithm. This is my Defri Hellman group. Now here I will define my encryption algorithm. I will define a three dash and I will define here AES 128. Okay, these are the algorithm and the key lifetime for phase one is eight hours. If you want, you can define seconds as well. 28800, which is also equal to eight hours only. Okay. Go with these settings, click in okay. Now go into your firewall two and do the same thing. Create your phase one policy in your firewall two as well. This is how guys we will do the configuration. Phase one, group two, and group five, we have used two groups there as well. Define SHA-1 as a hashing algorithm and SHA-256. Encryption algorithm is A is 128 and 3-DES. Lifetime is eight hours. We have a similar policies here, right? We have a similar policy on other end as well. Just make sure we have a similar policies, okay? Click on okay now. Now we will go with the phase two policies. I will go with the phase two policies here. I'll add here, add my phase two policies. Give the name phase two. Protocol is ESP. I will use three days as a alg encryption algorithm in phase two. AS128, SHA1, SHA256, Defi Hellman group for phase two is group two and lifetime is one hour. Click on OK. I'll go here and I will create the phase two as well. On the other device as well on firewall to the same policies. 128. 3 days. SHA1. SHA256. Group two. So these values are same now. Click on okay. After that, I will create one I gateway. I have to create this I gateway. So this I gateway basically for branch of a zero one, right? I will give the name I gateway for branch of a zero one. Branch of a zero one I gateway. I will use I version one. We have a two versions, I version one and I version two. I will use I version one. 
interface IP, I will define my interface is Ethernet one by one and IP address is this. Peer IP address, what is the other end IP address? Other end, I public IP is 171.7.250. So I will define that. Key set key is Cisco at 123 with capital C. Cisco at 123. Cisco at one two three. Cisco at one two three. Identification I will define IP address. So here I will define the local IP which is one fifty one dot seven dot two five zero. Copy that value and remote IP address is one seventy one dot seven dot two five zero. Advanced option enable net T. If you will go with the enable passive mode, which means this device is work as in a passive mode, it will not become this. It will always act as a responder. Okay, so do not select that option, guys. Here, exchange method is main mode I want to use, and method is phase one. Click on OK. Go here and create the gateway here as well. This gateway I'm creating for head office. I gateway. I will use Ike version one interface is Ethernet one by one, and IP address on that interface is this 171.7.250. Peer IP address is 171.7.250. Preset key is Cisco at 123. Cisco at one, two, three. IP address, IP address. Local IP address is 170. Remote IP address is 151, right? This. Go here, enable the net T. Main mode and configure your phase one policies. Click on OK. Now, after that, the last step which we used to do, we used to go to into IP sectors and we have to create one IP sector. IPsec. Tunnel four. Branch of a zero one. We will give, give always some name. So while looking into the name, we will get the idea. Now go here and create one tunnel interface. Tunnel. I will give here tunnel 10. This tunnel interface for branch of a 01. Virtual router I will put in default virtual router and I will also create one security zone which is VPN. Click on OK. IPv4 address I will use one address here which is 99.99.99.1 slash 30. Other end I will use 99.99. .99 dot two says 30 advanced call your ping interface profile here click on ok tunnel interface has been created call your i gateway which we have created define your phase two policies which we have created so advanced option configure the tunnel monitoring so destination ip address is 99.99.99.2 .99 .99 Profile, define the profile, failover, tunnel, monitor. We are using this tunnel monitor. So if our interface is not available, if there is any disconnection at the ISPN, basically we will get the, so this particular problem is basically taken care of by this tunnel monitor. That time tunnel will go down automatically. Proxy IDs, we don't need to define anything here because Palo Alto Firewall supports route-based VPN. This proxy ID only required for VPN when we are configuring between a Palo Alto and Cisco ASA. Click on OK. Go here and just do the configuration of IPsec tunnel. IPsec tunnel, we are configuring between 
head office, right? So I will give here HO. Tunnel interface, I will create one tunnel interface, maybe same 10. Comment, this is towards head office. Virtual router is default and create one security zone, which is BPN. IP4 address, just use one address here, 99.99.99.2 slash 30. IP4 address, enable the ping, click on OK. Go here and call your right gateway, call your phase to policy, so advanced option, and enable the tunnel monitoring, and define the tunnel IP address of your firewall one interface. Profile is, create new profile tunnel, monitor, I won't fail over that time, if I'll miss, interval is two seconds and if i'll miss three pings that time tunnel failover will trigger click on ok and we are done with the configuration in both the devices with regards to ipsec bpn now apart from that what you have to do you have to also configure two more things because it's a route based bpn guys so we have to configure the routing as well in your firewall one, you have to go to into static routes and you have to define the routes of your branch of his network. Branch of a zero one. And I will use, I will first add 20.1.1.0 network. Slash 24. Next stop is tunnel 10. Next stop IP address is 99.99.99.2. I will add the routes like that. Click on OK. Select clone it. Now this here I will use 21 series now. Define the 21 series now. Click on OK. Like that, I will add the routes and I will just add the security policy as well for this BPN traffic. So what I will do, I will just write here, I, BPN traffic source zone is inside to BPN and destination also, I will define both things inside of BPN means I am allowing all the traffic between inside and BPN or from inside to BPN or BPN to inside. I just allow everything. Click on OK. Do the same thing here, but just do the commit as well on this machine. Go here and configure the routing first on this machine, firewall two. Head office network, which is 10.1.1.0 hyphen 24. Interface is tunnel 10, and the next row is 99.99.99.1. This is the IP address of tunnel interface at head office, right? Click on OK. Select this, clone it. Next is 11 CDs. Change this value as well. 11 series here. Add one security policies. Not net. It's a security policy here. Click on add here. BPN traffic. You can modify as well. You can add what, what types of policy you want, but I'm just going with the basic one. Inside and BPN. Here also, inside and BPN. Do the commit now. So guys, configuration wise, we are good now. We will wait for some time.
So it's 99%, 99% here as well. Let's wait for 100%. Now, guys, what I will do because now it's a time to test our BPN functionality. So first, I will do one thing. I will run the debug at the advanced level so we can see all the information basically, which is exchanging between firewall one and firewall two. So I will run here debug. Ike MGR debug. Ike, this is the main daemon. Global on. At dump level, I will enable the debug at dump level. I just remember. And I will run this command tail follow yes mp log ikmgr.log. Debug ikmgr global on at dump level. Then tail follow yes mp log ikmgr.log. You will see BPN is already succeeded without initiating any traffic because the thing is why it's happened. Because we have enabled the monitoring, that is the reason. Okay. So if you will go into your network tab here, IP sector null. See, tunnel is up right now, right? Here also tunnel is up. See, tunnel is up because we have we did the configuration correctly. Now, guys, what I want. I'll do one thing here. Let me open one more session. So this let me open one more SS, SHS connection for on both the devices. Because we want to see the process from starting, right? How the negotiation is happening and all. So I will clear the sessions first. Or the best part, what I can do, I'll go here. I'm just doing this for testing, but let me just disable the tunnel monitoring, guys. Let me do the commit. Generally, we used to enable the monitoring. Okay, so in production environment, we always have the monitor, but just to see some important information, we I am doing it. Okay, just wait for this commit to complete. Commit is completed in this one. And firewall one is still going. Ninety nine percent. Clear, Ike, or clear BPN. This is the command to clear the assays, basically, Ike assay. 
clear VPN IP sec assay. I have cleared all the assays now. Now you will see your phase one assay and everything is deleted from both the devices from here as well. Clear. Ninety nine percent right now. VPN. I can say. Even though if you run this coin on one device, it will clear, but I'm just doing it. Okay, so now I have nothing here, right? Commit is also complete and you will see right now tunnel is in down state on both the machines. So what I will do, I'll go into my branch of his router and I'll just initiate the connection towards head office. So what I will do, I'll go here. Let me also start capturing the data on fast Ethernet zero by zero interface as well using the wire shark. Capture, enable it. Okay, capture is not happening. So I have to modify one of the file because my password is changed for evng. So I'm just doing it. Give me one minute. So we have to basically Wireshark prefer dot vet added with Notepad plus plus. Password is correct only actually why then capture is not happening. Let me enable this. Okay, I think I know the issue. I have to just take the access of this machine one more time from the SSH because key has been changed basically for that. Okay, looks like some issue is there basically. That's why I'm not able to do it. I have to check later, but not an issue. Let me just go without capturing the packets. Okay, so I'll go into this machine. I'll just initiate a ping to 10.10.10.1.1.100 with repeat count of 10 packets. Ping has been worked and you will see, we can see some packets as well, some logs, right? For Ike manager daemon, if I do the telnet on 10.1.1.100, Cisco, Cisco, I can also able to telnet on it, right? Which means things are working. Now, press the control C here, go into the other tab, press the control C here as well. Now start looking for these logs. I'll go at the starting.
from where this handshake will start it basically. From here it has just started. Go here as well. Okay, so you see the details now. Now your phase one is started from here. Phase one negotiation is started as a initiator in main mode, right? Initiated by the source IP address is 171.7.250. Port number is 500, which is a UDP port 500. Destination IP is 151.7.250. Port number is 500. This is the IP address of your head office firewall, right? This is the cookie value. Any seater cookie, which is calculated by your firewall too, or calculated by your branch office firewall. It's a eight, but byte of values okay and after that you will have a responder cookie so you can think this is ci value and this is cr value cr value is zero okay now what he has added the length he has added the payload details right and he has created one packet of 400 bytes that packet what he has done now this firewall 2 he sent this 400 bytes of packet towards firewall 1 440 bytes basically through the socket number right now because he has sent this packet now if you will go into your firewall 2 log firewall 1 logs here we have received the 440 bytes of packets now when my firewall he used to receive these four 40 bytes of packets, basically what? So this is the packet content. This is the packet content what he has received basically. Now what he will do? After receiving the packet, what? He will basically start processing it. So phase one negotiation is started as a responder mode and they are using main mode as a protocol. They are using main mode as a phase one method, right? Initiated by 151.7.250, 500. Destination is this. This is the initiator cookie and this is the responder cookie, guys. Validate these values. Initiator cookie is ending with EE4A, right? If you will see here, this is the same value. Initiator cookie. Now, what? Now my firewall one after receiving this packet, these 440 bytes of packet, he is start processing this packet. So you will see process has been begin from here. He has seen the security association, which is your policies. He has seen the policies, right? Apart from that, he has successfully get all the details now. He has seen the vendor ID, right? We'll see receive vendor IDs and all. Receive vendor ID, DPD is enabled, remote is supported DPD, right? And remote vendor is PanOS. He got the vendor ID. Receive vendor ID is PanOS, the next generation firewall. Selected net T version is this, so which means net T is also supported. Right now, what he's doing, he's, he's again started the process of comparing the algorithms basically. A lifetime we have received in second, this is the lifetime which we have received in one combination. Encryption is algorithm is this, hashing algorithm is SHA1, authentication method is PD shared key, right. Hash is SHA1, you will get type is this group two. DS group mode is this. So see, this is the first phase. This is the first essay or first combination of your phase one policies. Now you have a second combination of your phase two, phase one policies, right? Now third combination. Now fourth combination. And fifth, sixth, seventh, right? He's getting all the combination, eight combination. Now he Get, he will basically created all the combination. He parsed all the combination. And after that, you will see he will start comparing the things. Compare database with the peers, right? He has compared that database. Lifetime, he has matched this. 
encryption algorithm see is he is matching each and every type he will basically and what by end of the day he is find an acceptable proposal found means what whatever phase one policy is sent by your firewall to there is a match on firewall one that's why you will see this message in your debug which is acceptable and acceptable proposal found and after that what do he will do he will also create a one packet and now he will send that packet towards the other end the size is 144 byte you will see when firewall to he send the packet his size is 440 bytes and then this device firewall one is sending the packet his size is 4 140 byte this is a mess message number 2 and this is a message number 1 why this is the difference because in this you will get the all combination of your phase one policies right but here it is just sending the selected one just remember sending the selected one only and if you will see here this is the content of that packet you have forwarded out this packet through the socket and after that you will go here if you will see you will see here this device here received the 140 byte of message from firewall head of his firewall which is 151.7250 so guys that's how we will read the logs on your pan os if you you are able to read these logs and you will see this is the content if you will see if you will match this and this is starting with 14bb and ending with a9 right is starting with 14bb and ending with a9 which means whatever you have sent from here my firewall to here received it correctly right you will you can you can able to match these values right and after that what now your firewall to he will start processing this message number 2 after receiving right so now this processing is going on this processing is going on basically how it will do the processing go here it will match all the values received remote pan os so he got the bender id bender is palo alto firewall at both the end they are supporting dpd dead peer detection right they are supporting the net tv version as well begin the process he has also found the accepted proposal right now this see your message number 1 and 2 process is completed mm1 and mm2 phase is completed now you will see they have changed his phase from message number 1 2 till 3 to 5 right now your message number 3 and 4 guys just remember this mm message number 3 and mm message number 4 is known as dh exchange defi hellman exchange basically okay now they will basically he has computed the private key this is the computed private key this is the computed public key compute dh public key compute dh private key these two keys has been created right now you will get the details here at the remote and net dp loads and abc they are using the net dp loads as well on the packet and they have forwarded the packet of 2 to 8 bytes from towards firewall 1 now just see here you will receive a packet of 2 to 8 bytes right from firewall 2 on firewall 1 this is the packet content which we have received he will start processing this packet now you will see here hashing see in net d what do you have they have received you have received this ip address and port number ip address and port number and they have verified net d has been verified here net d payload is verified net is not detected now you will see compute ds public key compute ds private key see this is the computed ds public key other end also will compute these public and private keys as i have mentioned right and after that if you remember here 
they will complete this x and y right and after that x and y they will come they will create this dh key right and that dh key will same at both the end right and if you see in your palo alto firewall this dh key is this one this is the compute dh key shared this key is the one basically if you go here into the other end if you will see this is the public one this is the compute set secret if you will see this is this key is starting from 7a5v and ending with aa35 and is starting with 7a5v 5d and ending with a35 this key and this key similar guys on both the devices right i am talking about this dh key so that's how they will calculate the dh key guys and as we have seen in our calculation we get 16 here 16 here but in actual this kind of numbers you will get and these numbers is same on both the devices after that we have found the preset key psk has been found we have found the nunch values and when we have this preset key nunch value what we will do so if you remember we have a preset key and nunch value we would we will calculate the sk id right and this is the one which they have calculated sk id is computed and this is the sk id go here and this see the sk id here as well check skid value starting from caec ending with ff90 caec and ff90 this is the same key which means guys now if there is a mismatch with your preset key this calculation will fail this skid is different on both the devices if your calculation is if your preset key is incorrect they have calculated that skid then they have calculated skid d which i have told right then skid a for hashing purpose and after that if you go down a little bit skid e they have created see these values skid d is computed which is this one skid e is computed which is this one if you will see match skde if you will check so skde ending with fc1e right and skde here ending with fc1e this is similar values which means they have calculated these calculation is similar right if i'll go here these values they have calculated the same and after that they will calculate the final encryption key this is the final encryption key they will use this final encryption key in your palo alto firewall for encrypting message number 5 6 7 8 and 9 okay now you will see here after these calculation what using these calculation they will create the hash i value this is the hash i value which is created and you will see encrypted payload and all encrypted and they have sent 76 bytes this is the size of your message number 5 and you have received the 76 bytes here message number 5 has been received these are the data of message number 5 you can see the details here now decrypted payload but not trimmed decrypted payload by this one encryption algorithm they are using aes they are using this as a key for encrypting purpose right has received hashed with this and he has also sent the hash for psk is validated now they have changed the exchange from message number 6 to 
and till here you will see your phase one negotiation is completed in message number one he has also sent the 76 bytes towards other end you will see these bytes received by this guy as well 76 by received and you will see he will do the processing and all until here your phase one negotiation is succeeded so this is how guys we will track each and every packet and this is how we will track your keys in your palo alto firewall because my wireshack is not working otherwise i can able to decrypt the packets as well also using wireshack i'm not sure what's going on now you will see establish the exchange so your i cache has been created this is the initiator cookie this is the responder cookie this is the lifetime you will get. and after that your phase two negotiation has started we have received the 460 bytes so your phase two negotiation is started compute dh private keys and all again they are basically doing the calculating these keys because in phase two also they will generate few keys basically so if you rem if i'll go here aggressive mode i will not explain in phase two what quick mo quick mode message number one which is a message number seven you will see nunch value you will see the proposal which is phase two proposals these are the phase two proposals if you remember we have created this ipsec assays these phase two these are the values they are exchanging now phase two proposals you will get the transform set you will get the x and you will get the proxy id nr accepted proposal transform set y and proxy ID. these are the different x and y guys okay x and y are calculated public keys they will again do the calculation for keys basically to add some extra security guys whatever calculation they have done for keys in phase one this calculation they done just to protect the phase two because guys whatever data you will exchange between client and server or between users they will basically encrypt with the parameters what they will basically negotiate in phase two so phase one is just to secure your phase two so that's how you can think of now how secure is your ipsec vpn this x and y is calculated if we have enabled the pfs and pfs is enabled pfs stand for perfect forward secrecy and we have enabled this pfs by setting up this group otherwise we have to go with none no pfs if you will set the group which means pfs is enabled here by default okay pfs what it will do it will trigger the key negotiation again in your phase to just remember like that your action will basically complete in your ipsec side to side bpn if you will read the logs here compute public keys and all right use the local ids and all everything you will see here you will get the details they will send this message and like that they will complete the action process and if you go at the end basically you will see phase two is succeeded in quick mode and here also if you go at the end phase two is succeeded in responder mode where they are using quick mode right and you will see now your ipsec assay is established so when your phase one will complete your ike assay is created and it's a bi-directional assay just remember when your phase two will complete there is a ipsec assay is created and this assay is a unidirectional assay these are the unidirectional assays basically and if you will see the important thing guys because now after phase two whatever data you will exchange between client and server that data they will encrypt by using this in key you will see this particular key here they will use this key for the encryption purpose and this key they will use for the hashing purpose they will use protocol as which is esp these are the spi numbers 
the unique SPI number service parameter index to identify your assays. This is your encryption type. They are using AES-128 as a encryption algo, SHUT-1 as a hashing algorithm. So that's how you're basically IPsec negotiation works. And this is guys, how your BPN works in your Palo Alto firewall basically. I will not able to show you the encrypt encryption using the Wireshark because my Wireshark is not working properly. Let me just try one more time. What's going on here? I'm not sure my connection is C. I'm getting some error basically. I have to check why I'm getting this error. End of the pipe magic during the open, not sure what, what's that. I have to basically work on that issue because my last time my Eve is crashed, that was the reason. Okay. Cool. Let me just see what the other things we are having in IP. Let, now let me just tell you something regarding AH and ESP. So basically, when your IPsec is created, basically, so the thing is now we can we can basically encrypt the data by using two encapsulation protocol AH and ESP. We always use ESP guys, we never use AH. Why? Because AH, if you will use AH, it will only provide you the integrity. Encryption is not supported by AH. So that's why we never use AH. We use ESP because ESP supports both encryption and hashing. Means confidentiality and integrity, both things you will get with ESP. So provide integrity and authenticity. Encryption is not supported by AH. It used the layer three protocol number 51. No net T is not supported. It's It uses tunnel mode and transport mode. AH uses authentication algorithm like HMAC MD5 and HMAC SHA. And AH AUTH authentic entire datagram, including the tunnel header. ESP, it provides the encryption and integrity and authenticity, all these three things. It works on protocol number 50. It's a layer three protocol number. Net is also supported. Entry replay protection you will get. You can use ESP in both tunnel and transport mode. ESP encrypts the original datagram, right? So these are the some benefits of ESP protocols, guys. Now, if you want like entire series of BPN, so as I have mentioned, you can purchase that particular series in 500 INA and you will get all the BPN related videos there where basically I've explained all the advanced concept of BPN along with the captures and everything basically. And all the use cases also you will get into these particular videos.